inviting me to talk in this uh, interesting forum. And today I will speak about modeling the description regulation. As we all know, the cell is an amazing machine that responds very efficiently to external and internal signals. Once a signal arrives to the cell, it usually initiates a cascade of uh, signal transduction that ends with the transcription factor that enters the nucleus and either activate transcription or change the chromatin uh, state. And in the last decade, we have lots of uh, data accumulated. And this data, mainly gene expression, was used to reconstruct the networks of uh, transcription regulation. And indeed, many works, many models have tried to model uh, transcription regulation. One class of such models are influence models that describe regulation based on ex expression data. They are usually represented as networks where the nodes in the networks represent genes and the edges represent some dependency between the expression profiles of the genes. And such are, for example, Bayesian networks and relevance networks and more. Uh, one model that was particularly successful is called the module network. It was presented by Sega et al. in 2003. And here they rely on the assumption that genes in the cell are organized into module, modules with common function and response. And the genes in the same module are co-regulated and co-expressed. The module network is actually a type of a Bayesian network, but here the genes do not represent, the nodes do not represent single genes, but rather groups of genes, which they call modules. And the genes in the same module, they are co-regulated, so they have the same set of parents in the graph, and they are co-expressed, so they share the, the same uh, conditional probability distribution, the CPD. In the original paper, uh, the parents in the graph, we call them regulators, and the module they regulate are the target modules. Uh, in the original uh, paper, the CPD is represented as a decision tree, but it can have other formats, such as a simple table or a continuous function. And uh, the module network algorithm accepts as an input gene expression, and it infers both the assi assignment of genes into modules and the structure of the network, so who, which are the regulators of each module. And they were, they were able to find in a specific yeast system 50 modules, 92% of them are with enriched function and 60% with coherent regulation. And this is partially due to the fact that uh, the modular structure of the network increases the effective number of samples that are used for training and thus it increases the statistical robustness of the model. However, module network, like other influence models, suffer from a problem of uh, causality. So they sometimes fail uh, to explain causality, and now I will show you. Um, say we have two genes with a similar expression profile. It is sometimes hard, uh, impossible to decide whether A regulates B, B regulates A, or A and B are regulated by C. Now, if we go back to our cartoon, uh, we might notice that we actually now have data from other parts of the process, starting from protein-protein interactions, binding of protein to DNA, the DNA sequence itself, nucleosome positioning and modifications. And we wanted to use the other levels of information in order to improve the model and address the causality problem. So uh, the model I present here today is called the physical module network, and it has two components. One is a module network, which describes uh, expression data, and the other is a graph of physical interaction. This is a graph that uh, is uh, defined over, it, the nodes in the graph represent proteins and genes, and it has three types of edges. Undirected edges represent protein-protein interactions, Directed edges represent protein-DNA binding interactions, and directed edges uh, from a gene to a, prote to a protein represent transcription of a gene to its protein product. 
Now, um, if we knew what are the true pathways in the cell, we would like to use uh, the pathways in order to improve our selection of regulators. So if we have a regulator and its target genes in the module network, ideally we would like to uh, the regulator to have a regulation path from its protein to the target genes. However, uh, what we have are not, uh, we don't know what are the true uh, pathways in the cell, what we have are noisy observations of physical data, and our goal now is to find the configuration of the model that best explains the noisy observation of gene expression and physical interactions, and we also like the uh, physical interaction graph to support the choice of regulators in the module network. Or in other words, uh, we want the two uh, components of the model to be consistent. So we define consistency in the following way. We say that the model is consistent if each regulator in the module network has a legal regulation path from its protein to a transcription factor that binds its target gene uh, in the physical interaction graph. So now uh, we have, uh, we get as an input noisy observations from gene expression, protein-protein interactions, protein-DNA interactions, and we want to use some learning procedure that finds the best configuration, that, that finds the configuration of the model that best explains the data. And for this we need to define the scoring metric and also what is the learning procedure that we use. So we'll start with the module network. Um, in the original paper, they used the learning procedure that accepts an input gene expression and a pool of potential regulators. And it uses an iterative procedure that iterates between assigning the genes into the modules and finding for each module its uh, regulators. So this is a structure uh, search in the graph. They iterate between these two parts while optimizing a target function, which is the Bayesian score. This is derived from the posterior probability of the model. And upon convergence, we get as an output a list of module, modules, and for each module, a set of regulators and the conditional probability distribution, its CPD. And now we want to uh, to see what is the learning of the complete model. Um, we score the model again using a Bayesian score, which can be viewed as the sum of the prior and the likelihood of the model. And if we choose a certain type of priors, uh, the score has uh, two important, att important attributes. First, it is decomposable to the two components of the model, to the module network and to the interaction graph. And that, thus, it uh, allows an efficient learning. And secondly, it penalizes inconsistent configurations, so it uh, keeps the model consistent during the learning. The learning procedure itself is again is uh, similar to that of a simple module network. Here we get as an input gene expression and the pool of potential regulators, but also set of physical interactions and a set of uh, transcription factors. We iterate between gene reassignment and structure search, but now each part of this iteration is done for the module network and for the interaction graph in, uh, simultaneously. Um, so when we want to add a regulator in the module network, we need to find a regulation path in the interaction graph. So one edge in the module network equals to uh, a regulation path in the interaction graph. And now I will show you uh, one step in the search. So now we want to add a regulator to the module network. What we need is to find a regulation path that maximizes the score and keeps the model consistent. Uh, for this, we weight each potential edge with how much score we would gain if we add this edge to the model. And we, use, uh, and we search for the heaviest path from the regulator to the target genes using uh, Bellman-Ford algorithm. 
the removal of an edge is done in a similar way. So now uh, we wanted to validate our model and we started with uh, validating, uh, validation of using synthetic data um, uh, with changing, num uh, changing levels of noise. We also want to compare the performance of our model to the module network and for this we measure the likelihood uh, score of a test set of the two models how well the models uh, reconstruct for each gene its true regulators, and also the ability of the physical module network to reconstruct correctly the regulation pathways. Uh, we used uh, synthetic um, gene expression that uh, we sampled a synthetic gene expression from a synthetic network that was defined over 300 genes, uh, seven modules, 10 regulators, and we sampled physical observations from real biological data covering almost half of the real uh, biological network. So when um, looking at the likelihood of a test set of the two models, we see that the performance of the physical module network and the module network is very similar. So it means that adding another level of information to the physical module network did not affect it, uh, its predictive power. Um, when measuring how well the models are able to reconstruct for each gene its, true, its regulators, uh, we saw that uh, the recall of the two models, the recall rate was very similar. However, the precision of the module network was much higher. It means that it chooses less false positive regulators. And this was true also when noise was introduced to the expression data. Lastly, when noise was introduced to physical interactions data, we saw that the ability of the physical module network to correctly reconstruct pathways was uh, highly affected by noise in the, physical, in the protein DNA interactions, but was not affected at all by noise in the protein-protein uh, interactions. Um, so now we wanted to evaluate our model using real biological data and we started by uh, the ability of the, model, of the model to reconstruct pathways. So this is only one step in the search. Uh, for this, we needed a system where we have known modules and their known true regulators. And we used uh, the well-known uh, uh, set of uh, East knockout and knockout, knockdown experiments so here, uh, each gene that was manipulated uh, had uh, two groups of genes, uh, a group of genes that were repressed after the manipulation and a group of genes that was activated. So we defined the manipulated gene to be the regulator and its uh, repressed or activated uh, genes to be the target module. We used uh, physical interactions from various sources and reconstructed the pathway for each such pair of a regulator and target module. So we were able to reconstruct uh, six, 660 pathways and uh, we also validated them statistically by comparing to pathway, pathways that were learned from uh, random uh, networks and we found 105 uh, significant pathways like the one here the pathways span uh, a list of uh, cellular processes. For example, six uh, pathway, pathways in the mating uh, process that end with sterile 12 transcription factor, 10 pathways in the cell cycle um, process that end with well-known cell cycle uh, transcription factors su such as UME6, CBF1, FKH2, 11, um, 11 pathways in the protein bio biosynthesis process that end with GCN4 uh, amino acid metabolism factor and more. Uh, we also got a couple of interesting hi hi new hypotheses from this uh, network, like the one here. So SYN3 is a histone that it allows, who is known to regulate meiosis genes. And here it uh, regulates a target module via STB4. STB4 is a 
um, is a zinc finger with an unknown, fu unknown function and that binds 6% of the target genes and we hypothesize that STB4 is, uh, has a role in regulated my regulating meiosis genes. Uh, this is very nice, but we want to see how we do for full learning. And for this, we used uh, another well-studied system, the yeast uh, cell cycle. Uh, so uh, we took 594 cell cycle, cycling genes that were published, uh, of which almost 70 had a regulation um, uh, role were said to be the potential regulators. And we received the network over 36 modules, 15 of them had a regulator, uh, nine peak at G1 or G1S, six of them peak at S and four in G2M. And overall the network is quite uh, coherent um, and the relevant transcription factors were, were chosen. We had a list of uh, interesting modules, and one of them is uh, this module, which picks at G2M and uh, is enriched for mitosis gene. This module is regulated by MOB1, who is uh, uh, part of the mitotic exit network, and MOB1 regulates the module, the module via FKH2, which is another G2M well-known uh, regulator uh, in its cell cycle, uh, and indeed it binds almost half of the genes in the module. So uh, lastly, we wanted to uh, see how well we do for in human data. This is much, much harder because the human uh, network is much larger and the coverage is quite poor and also noisy. Um, so again, we concentrated on one step in the search. So, so this is only pathway reconstruction. And for this, we used data from a paper by Shapiro et al. Um, two years ago. Here they measured changes in uh, human cells for following viral infection. And they measured both physical interactions between uh, viral protein and host proteins and uh, changes in transcription and they were able to detect 12 clusters, each one with a unique uh, behavior. So what we did, we um, um, reconstructed pathways between all 10 viral proteins and all 12 clusters. Most of the pathways were not very informative and ended with the general transcription factors such as TAF1 and CREB1. However, we were able to detect a couple of interesting example, uh, examples that end with uh, interferon uh, transcription factors and NF-kappa-B transcription factor that have a known role in the host response to viral infection. Um, so to summarize or to discuss, um, today I've shown you the physical module network, which is an integrative module, model. There are many good integrative models that are, were published in the last decade. This is a very partial list of them. However, most of them either combine information to find, to detect functional uh, clusters, or they annotate or reconstruct pathways. And here we do both uh, things together. There are a couple of uh, exceptions that infer both clusters the regulators and the binding motifs of the regulation. However, these two works do not model a mechanism which is upstream to the transcription factor. So the physical module network models transcription regulation and upstream mechanism. And in that sense, the model is present a richer picture of reality. And we hope that it is more accurate because um, uh, because uh, its configuration is supported by independent uh, sources of data. Uh, in that sense, it also addresses the causality problem of the module network and other inference models because it uh, uh, improved the selection of regulators and also uh, explained the mechanism. Uh, its main, main weakness are noisy observations. So if the physical interaction observations are very noisy, it often fails to reconstruct correctly the pathways. 
Uh, and also it might choose not to select a true regulator because this regulator was not supported by the physical interaction data. However, um, such obstacles, I hope that they can be overcome with the improvement of data and also with uh, improvement of models. Uh, and I'm positive that uh, many more integrative uh, models are sure to come in the, in the following years. So with this, I would like to thank and acknowledge my dear supervisors, Neil Friedman from the Hebrew University, Aviv Rega from Broad Institute, my friends in the lab and uh, supporting funds. Thank you very much.